Beatrice, uh, thank you for joining this uh, radio program. Uh, could you tell me how you came to Kosovo and how you started to work for William Walker and the Kosovo Verification Mission? Yes, certainly, Christian. What happened is that I had I was just back from China and I found a lot of phone calls from the French Minister of Foreign Affairs saying that Ambassador Walker wanted me to be his spokesperson. At that time, I knew nothing about the Kosovo situation and I had asked to join as an observer. In fact, at that time, I thought that the Kosovo Albanians were the victims and that I should go and help them by observing the situation. So I first went to Vienna, but Ambassador Walker did not come because he was afraid he could not go back to uh, to Kosovo. The, the relationship was not very good with the Serbs at that time for him. And later, about two weeks later, I met him in London. He said this to me. For me, you worked for the BBC. You were born in Washington, D.C. So you must be pro American and pro-British, and you would be an excellent spokesperson. That is how I became the spokesperson for um, the OSCE. So this was uh, in 1998. Uh, what what uh, month was this? No, this was this was not. This was just two months before the evacuation of the OSCE. This was in January 1999. Oh no, I think, let me think now, uh, you're right, I'm sorry, it was in 98, that's correct, my mistake, it was in 98 of course, it was two months before the evacuation, I arrived in Kosovo in January. Many, many Serbians, um, they, they don't believe in the story of uh, Rachak that uh, this was a uh, massacre of Albanian civilians. What is your recollection of these days? I will tell you what my recollection is. At the time, at the beginning, uh, Ambassador Walker was pleasant and I had no reason not to believe what was said. So I remember going to the funeral and trying to follow him because his bodyguards were so close I couldn't hear a single thing and I had to be able to hear what he said to tell the press. I remember that the French ambassador, Gabriel Keller, told me, Ratchak did not happen like this, this is not what happened. Unfortunately, I did not believe Ambassador Keller at the time. Later, of course, I understood what the truth was that the Serbian army had actually officially told everybody that they were going to Ratchak because there were some uh, Uteka fighters. This was no secret. And as the Finnish head of the forensic investigation uh, said... Helena Ranka. Exactly. Helena mm -hmm. Ranka. What happened was I was at her press conference and she explained. She explained that the evidence had been mostly destroyed by the OSCE because it was trampled all over. She explained that what happened is that some civilians got caught in a, a, a conflict between Ucheka fighters and the Serbian army. And then they were dressed up to look like a massacre. And this is what the world should, this is what mostly everybody knows today, and this is what the world should know. Some people hang on to the Ratchak, which is, you have to see Moral Combat by Alan Little, and that is yes, well It's an excellent documentary, excellent, excellent documentary. If uh, the listeners of uh, Radio D has an opportunity to see this documentary, they should find it on YouTube. And they, yes, absolutely. They can find also the transcript um, on, on the internet, that's right. So uh, this is very interesting what you're you're saying here that the French ambassador actually knew the truth. 
uh, how was this not communicated or how was this communicated to the Americans? Well, um, I think Ambassador Keller had limited powers. He couldn't go over Ambassador Walker's head. And I have to tell you that as a spokesperson, um, I could see that Walker was extremely um, cautious of my communication with anyone at the State Department. In fact, in writing, he forbade me from communicating with anyone with, uh, from the White House. I occasionally got queries from the White House and simply wrote what I had to write, what I was telling the world as spokesperson. And he saw this correspondence and he said, no, uh, you are not to communicate in any way because Ambassador Walker has again Moral Combat by Alan Little Stowes, he had one version in Kosovo and another version for the White House. So um, I think Gabriel Keller did his best, but he was number two in uh, the OSCE and there was little he could do. So who was William Walker working for? Was he working for the State Department or maybe some intelligence structures like the CIA? Well, at the time there were rumors and there was little access to the, uh, just after the NATO war, there was little access to the internet. But of course, later, if you go on the internet, it is no secret that Ambassador Walker was in Salvador and had a long career with the CIA. So uh, I will let you make up your own mind about this. So how much was Rachak a pretense, a precondition uh, for the NATO bombing on uh, March 24, 1999? It would was? the NATO bombing would have been possible without the pretense of a massacre in Rachak? That is absolutely right. Ratchak was uh, what you call the straw that broke the camel's back. It was necessary to turn around public opinion. A, a, a massacre like this is, of course, horrifying. And it was all that was needed. Again, there was a lot of evidence that everything was done for Rambouillet to go ahead. We know that um, the... Uh, State Department, Madeleine uh, Albright, did her best to convince um, the head of the Albanians to join in the talks because he didn't want to do anything and it was necessary for him to join because otherwise there was no reason to be able to bomb. So uh, clearly Ratchak was key. How much, you know how the CIA operates, how much the, 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 the State Department actually uh, in Washington DC knew about all this, no one will ever know. Anyway, that's what happened. So uh, I have myself seen uh, uh, CIA involvement in uh, trying to destabilize uh, Serbia. I have seen how they have been uh, training uh, Utica terrorists. I call them terrorists, not fighters in the ground safety zone around Kosovo. And uh, we have the Albanian terrorist Florim Eupi, who was working directly for the CIA. And he and his team was responsible for blowing up the Nish Express on February 16, uh, 2001. Uh, how uh, long was this CIA game? How long did they plan this before, because in early 1998, they said that Utica was a terrorist organization. It's very difficult. Obviously, I came in late. Uh, when, I, when, I, when I arrived, um, I, knew, I knew nothing of this. So I suppose it had been usually the way that it operates is that they start with propaganda and so on. I can tell you what happened afterwards, after after the KVM, when I came back to Kosovo. But what I can tell you is that I myself had evidence of 
secret operations. In Christina, when I was the spokesperson, I can tell you that Ambassador Walker had was shadowed by uh, an American colonel who was in his mid 40s, uh, Mike Phillips, and he, uh, on the one hand, could be very charming and very polite and looked like, you know, very preppy, as you say in English. He looked like the, 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 the perfect gentleman. And on the other hand, he would be very brutal and use fine language. And he behaved badly. And I know that Walker would go nowhere without him. So he would have been CIA, clearly. And also, there was another famous figure, a British general called Drevyankiewicz, uh, John Carroll Drevyankiewicz, who was a totally cynical, uh, brutal personality, and he may well have been involved in this plot. What about guys like William Holbrook? He was uh, very much involved from the uh, U.S. State Department side. Uh, how well did he cooperate with other intelligence structures of the uh, Americans? Listen, I do not know. All I know is when I watched uh, Moral Combat, I saw a picture of William Holbrook who had come to Kosovo without a province of Serbia, without telling President Milosevic, and he is photographed sitting down on the floor, surrounded by two UCK fighters squatting next to him with their guns. So that was a very embarrassing photograph for him. That is all I know. Jovan, uh, we can maybe speak a bit in Serbian. Vi ste slušali sada, jel vi imate pitanje za Beatrice? Pa, dosta sam razumeo ovaj sumnje u to gospodin, to je ambasador Walker, da li je radio direktno pod američkim snagama ili vladi, ili je bio u u Ciji, je li tako bilo nešto? Da, tako, to je diskusija, to Beatrice ne zna za sada. Da, da. Ali nevrvatno je priča što je Beatrice pričala sada. Ona je bila potporo Kosovo Verification Mission. Da, da. I ovo je bio vrlo, vrlo pridljove igre, ovaj, Amerikance, da pitam Beatrice. Beatrice. Ja? Uh, what, what do you think of, the, of, of this dirty game of, of the Americans? I mean, they, they, they say that uh, they w work for democracy and, and human rights. Uh, should we have any confidence when the Americans are going to war to protect human rights and democracy? You know, uh, it's on the one hand, I was born in the United States. And I think the American people are not aware always of what their government has done in many countries. Clearly also, the Americans were not alone. Uh, they were supported in this by Britain. There is no question about that. Uh, and, and also, clearly, uh, this is a very ugly game. And who can approve when you know what really happened? Uh, Kosovo was uh was a sham and the nato war was illegal the united nations never approved of it um i still remember the spokesman uh saying oh we've had just a little bit of collateral damage and of course we know we know how many civilians totally innocent people were killed during the bombings we also know that the kosovo albanians had to flee they were also victims of this uh, of of this bombing, and so uh, and it went and it and it went on because of course the results of uh, this bombing and Kosovo becoming so-called independent has left the country and a lot of churches have been destroyed. We know that Serbs have been persecuted so we know also the devastating consequences uh, for uh, Metohija, the cradle of Serbian orthodoxy. 
Okay. Yes, and uh, Serbians should, of course, uh, whenever ever they have a chance, go to visit the monasteries in Kosovo, Dechani, and all the other monasteries. Uh, but uh, uh, let, let's move back to uh, uh, March 22nd, 23rd, uh, the evacuation of the uh, KVM mission in their orange trucks. Could you tell us uh, what happened these days? Well, I can tell you that obviously the evacuation had been planned all along, all along, um, probably organized essentially by uh, uh, John Drevencevic. But of course, they pretended that it was a big surprise, and suddenly at uh, three in the morning we had to be evacuated. So what I remember. What, what day was it? This was twenty second or twenty third. Uh, you know, it was 20 years ago. I could, I can yeah. send you. I, I have this in writing somewhere. I do not have it in my head, so I can't tell you exactly. But I it was just before the bombing. Just before the bombing. Oh yes, of course. What I, I can tell you, okay. I can't tell you what day it was, but it was. I remember it snowed heavily. We all had to go at three in the morning. What happened? I, I, I must also say that at that stage I was no longer folk person because um, I'm very glad to say that I had been my my mobile phone had been taken away from me and I had absolutely no role and I was very thankful for that because um, I did not want at that stage I understood what was happening and I did not want any part of it. So what happened is that we all got into cars, we went to Macedonia, we were, uh, we traveled without any problem, all of us, all the KPM traveled to Macedonia, we arrived in um, the capital, we were not welcome, um, co uh, Ambassador Walker sent a message saying, oh, hello, uh, we'll be back soon, take care. <laughs> just before people were bombed, which I thought was ridiculous. And we had, because the atmosphere in general, people, the Macedonians, felt that uh, we were not welcome. We went to Orhid on the lake. And the bombing started, I think, two or three days later. And it was one of the worst days of my life, I remember. So, uh, what made you? Uh, uh, what made the, the uh, William Walker and everything? Uh, did you protest publicly or internally within the KVM at that time? I don't understand. Before you lost your uh, position as spokes, spokesperson. Oh, I, there was nothing I could do. I had, I had been in touch with some journalists, particularly a German one, who knew a lot more than me outside. So I wrote a few articles on his for his uh, publication under a false name, at, 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 under the name of a, uh, I forget the name just now. Anyway, um, I wrote a few stories later. At the time, I was totally helpless. I do remember telling uh, General Gredjankiewicz what I thought of him, because before that, they staged a very stupid incident. Uh, in order to have an excuse for me not being the spokesperson anymore. So uh, it was done in a very clumsy way. Um, I won't go into it now, but anyway, as you can imagine, there was nothing I could do. I had no mobile phone, I could communicate with no one. So there I was in Macedonia, and that's it. A, a few days later, I got a plane back home, and that was the end of it for, for then. But uh, uh, who organized your uh, removal? You think William Walker was personally involved in this? Oh yes, I think he told me once that he was, you know, he was sorry or something. He said something like that to me at one stage. Uh, of course, I think, you know, um, it's it's it's. Uh, he basically he was he was a typical, a very good agent. He was a, a he was not. Uh, aggressive or rude like Drevjantevich or like uh, Mike Phillips. He was always pleasant and so he did what he was told. He was in charge. He of course is responsible 
But I must say that he just told me, oh, I'm sorry for what happened, and that's it. You know, that's so, it. So, so this, this must have been organized by someone higher up. Could no, it no, go? No, no, no. It was organized clearly by Mike Phillips and Revienkevich, who were technically under him, but who basically looked at. And of course, and of course, they were they were quite right to remove me, because by that time I was already in touch with uh, for my job as a spokesperson. I was completely ignorant when I came. I was even pro pro uh, Kosovo Albanian, but I could see for myself that the MUP, as they were called, the police, were not the monsters that they were uh, said to be. And of course, I had contacts with the BBC, with a number of journalists, and I heard everything they said because my job was to speak to them. So after a while, I understood the situation better. And I, I, I think, yes, I became a danger to the operation. And so I should have been removed, quite rightly. Now, uh, Walker was too busy with other things. So uh, who picked this up? Mike Phillips and uh, Drevienkevich. And so they quite rightly told him to remove me and created a, some stupid incident so that there was an excuse officially to remove me. So it, it's very logical. Mm. Have you talked to Alan Little after these events? Yes, of course, and so I was interviewed in Moral Combat. Mm. Excellent. Jovan? Yes. Kako zvuči? Jel imate neki pitanje za Beatrice? Pa ovaj, evo ja ću pokušati da postavim pitanje ukoliko po njenim saznanjima da li barata sa cifrom, da li je do OSC stiglo informacije koliko Srba je moralo da i oni koji nisu Srbi morali da pređu u Srbiju. Da li u OSC imali su te podatke tada? Yes, uh, Jovan is asking the question now, if you in the OZE had information about Serbians at that time, in 1998-1999, that had to flee to Serbia because of oppression and terrorism from Albanians. Uh, when I was before the bombings, absolutely not. There was no information you can imagine. No. Not, not until after the bombings when it became very clear that the churches were being destroyed, that people were being persecuted. But before the bombings, there was no such information. Excellent. Jovan? Da, da. Razumeo sam nešto. Nisu imali informaciju za vreme i posle bombardovanja, je li tako nešto? Posle bombardovanja. Ona je otišla i pre bombardovanje. Aha, aha. E, a, a, a ne, nije imala podaci za da Srbi su otišli pre bombardovanja. Da, da, da. Da, znam. Sa pokretanjem snaga. Ne znam šta još. Ovaj, spominjalo se uh, Makedonija ovaj, uh, i, i nisam dobro razumeo taj deo u Makedoniji. Ovaj, pokušao sam da, da propratim, ali... Rekli da KVM nisu bili dobrodošli tamo. Aha. Oni su osjetili prijatnost kad su bili u Ohridu. I sve je bio planiran. Ovaj agent CIA, Mike Phillips, on je bio mnogo važnije nego William Walker. Da, da. I tako da, da kratko ovaj, objasnam. I ona je izgubila svoju poziciju kao portparol i rekla je da oni su bili u pravu. Zato što ona je otkrivila ova istina, a istina ne ide zajedno za ovaj misliju. A u vezi one finske, šta je ona bila sudija što je otkrila... Helena Ranta. Da. Helena Ranta, da. Jovan je zaskim o Helena Ranta. Ti je tako s njim kada je u Kosovo? Da, da, da. 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 Uh, I haven't heard from her for some years, but I still have her, her contact. And she told me this. When she came for the press conference, she met with Walker. And she told him what she was going to say at the press conference. And she was not 
going to say that Rachak was a massacre. And the so the just say, trust it. Yeah, uh, ovaj ov- ov- Beatrice kaže da ovaj Helena Ranta je bila na ovaj konferenciji sa Trumpa. I ona je rekla ovaj William Walker da neće da kaže da ovaj masak. You please continue, Beatrice. And so this is, I think she wrote this anecdote in her biography. I think it's very famous now. But what William Walker did was he picked up a pencil on the table. He cut it in two and he threw the pieces of the pencil in her face. He was so angry. Please, So, Helena Renta, I had a transcript of her press conference, and uh, I remember, I still remember, because I took a lot of notes, everything she said. And as, as, I, as I told you, um, she made a very thorough forensic investigation. Uh, for instance, she said that when you, when you normally, if someone has been touching uh, gunpowder, you can tell on their fingers. But then so many things can interfere with that. And so she could not pick up that the, 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 the men who were dead uh, and supposedly massacred had touched gunpowder but clearly for her there was no question that it was not a massacre but that they were civilians caught in a crossfire that was the conclusion they were were dressed up to look like they were uh, victims of a massacre Da, ovaj Helena Ranta je rekla na ovaj štampa sa novinari, u konferenciji sa novinari, da nije bio masakr, to je bio civilisti koji su bili u vatru, kada su MUP i Vojska Jugoslavia borili protiv učeka. Da. Pist. Jovan, je li imate dodatno pitanje? Da, ovaj, bilo se pričalo o tome da su donošena tela sa drugih krajeva pa su skidali uniforme u Čekaj i ta tela polagali tu račku. O tome je pričalo se u Srbiji tada. Jel, yes. In, in, uh, the, he is saying that uh, the civilians were dressed in Utica uniforms. What do you know about that? Uh, I don't remember. I don't think so. No, because that would have been the truth that they were soldiers fighting for Utica. No, I think I remember that the supposed the victims, let's say, the men who were killed in the crossfire, they were dressed in civilian clothes, they had been dressed again, and they were all aligned. I forget the details, but it was made to look like a massacre, and it had not been one. That is clear. Yeah. I da u stvari to ni, nisu bili civili nego učeka vojnici koji su stradali da, u borbama. Da, Beatriz kaže da nema podaci da priča se so, to sa sada. Da, da, pa dobro, razumljivo. Pa ne znam, ovaj, e, e, posle toga Račka je nastalo bombardovanje i Beatriz je morala da ode, jel tako? Ili je smenjena, ili da, je da, prošlo da. mandat, jel tako? Da, 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 ona, ona je otišla, ne, izgubila je poziciju kao pod parol i onda je uzio avion od Skopje kući i to je to, Francuskoj. Aha. Ništa, ovaj... Ja ne znam šta bi još tu slušao sam dosta toga ovaj zanimljivih stvari pa ne znam šta bi ja još da dodam na to uglavnom je ona nama objasnila sve situacije pa vidjet ćemo da to prevedemo pa kad budemo napravili video ovaj klip da to sve Odlično. ide sa titlom uh, Beatrice uh, thank you so much for being with us 
uh, will uh, put this on YouTube. This is live streaming on the radio, and uh, whoever understood could understand it. But uh, we'll uh, make a, a, a YouTube video with the subtitles uh, later on. Johan will do that. Johan should have a YouTube video, Malokasnye. I da ima srpski prevo na ova video da da ovaj veći publiko u Srbiji može da da zna šta se dešava uh, u Račak i za KVM Kosovo Verification Mission i OPS na Kosmetu 98 i 99. Jovan. Jeste, jeste. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, thank 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 you very much for having me and of course the world should know what what really happened. Svijet treba da zna šta se, deš, šta se deša, kaže Beatrice. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Beatrice, uh, thank you very much from... Uh, 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 you want to tell uh, us uh, what is uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in the world, uh, uh, what is uh, uh, um, in this moment uh, Račak uh, in 1998. Uh, 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 99 15 15 